Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, over the weekend, I heard a lot of reports about some very large hail that was in parts of Australia. So I'd like to take you here on October 31st to the radar animation out of Brisbane, Australia. And what you've got here, well, I think you can see what I'm seeing, and that is a lot of flashes of pink and purple. If I just pause it here, you can see that several of these large storms had a well-defined hail cores. And I'd like to show you a couple of video or at least one video and a picture of this the video on the left here uh, this was widely shared across Australia media here showing you the holes punched into the roof of this woman's house as these hailstones which were the size of grapefruit you can see them outside there were falling into this neighborhood over there on the right you can see the damage to the roofs and again come back to the video on the left that's one of the hailstones in her living room that again punched through the roof here so this weekend saw some pretty impressive weather in this part of Australia but come back to the United States early this this morning this is all that we were watching this is our early morning radar animation uh, and you can just see we had some lake effect snow coming off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario and a system that was exiting parts of the Northeast today that which will be a, a source of some very strong winds uh, in the Northeast today but outside of that it's going to be a relatively quiet week for much of us across the United States and the reason why is because of this upper level pattern so you can see the deep trough that is in parts of the Northeast so that's what's going to keep things unsettled there today very windy and also we've got that cold air that's tucked into that trough. We'll talk about that frost threat in a few moments. But you do see what's behind it, a broad ridge. And that ridge will be moving to the east throughout this week, really moderating temperatures, warming things back up significantly. But kind of loading up here in the Arctic, loading up here in the Canadian archipelago into uh, Alaska, we will be seeing deep troughs that sweep into the Pacific Northwest and into California by the time we talk about next weekend's weather. And that's going to really change the pattern up for week two. Here's the other thing we're going to be watching for week two. That is Hurricane Ada. That is the deepest we've ever made it into the Greek alphabet in terms of naming systems. And Ada, after going through parts of Central America, could emerge into the Gulf of Mexico. And I want to talk about what's going to happen there, at least with our best insights as of early Monday morning. Now, before we go much farther, I would like to just recap the last month. You see here, this map is showing you global average temperature anomalies, so differences from normal, over the last month. And if you had to pick out the coldest spot here across the planet, it's really going to be tucked away in the Canadian prairies in the north central plains of the United States. Of note, two things here I just want to point out. Look at how warm things have been in and around the Black Sea. While it has been very dry there compared to normal, the temperatures have remained quite warm. The second thing is going to be what's going on in the Arctic, where we've kind of jumped off of my color bar here. Just to kind of bring you up to speed on a few things we've been discussing in the long range outlook. Remember 2020 right now is the lowest Arctic sea ice extent uh, that we have on record. Again, our records go back to 1979. So here we are currently sitting that dashed line there is 2012, which was the previous record. And what I want to be thinking about here is as this sea ice recovers, the pace at which it recovers will be important for one, the development of systems out of the Bering Sea and out of the Aleutian Islands. We call that the Aleutian Low. And then the second thing will be about the transfer of heat through the troposphere into the stratosphere, which will ultimately affect the polar vortex. At this particular point, thinking about the polar vortex, the winds deep in the in the troposphere and at the base of the stratosphere right now are not exhibiting any behavior that's cause for concern on an early polar vortex disruption. But I'll keep an eye on it and I'll let you know what's going on there. But coming here just to the United States, Look at the October 1st through October 31st average temperature ranks by climate district. You can see the impacts of that deep uh, uh, cold air mass that we had to deal with here throughout the end of the month uh, coming into the central part of the United States. While it was much warmer than average across the southeast of the mid-Atlantic and then definitely warmer than average across parts of the southwest including California. Now, to talk more about a quick recap, this is how much snow we've actually seen so far this season. So when you look at this, just a number to put in here, that color right there represents one foot of total snow accumulated here. And this really just represents the month of October. When I saw this map, I started thinking about what it may look like when you compare it to average. And so I'd like to show you that. Now, it is early in the season, but when you compare how much snow we've accumulated here through November the 1st compared to the 2008 to 2019 average, just remember these colors represent more than normal and these would be less. So you notice that if you get 
honestly, to the east of the Continental Divide, especially in parts of Montana, uh, we're in sitting some places there over 30 inches in excess of normal. But the northern plains tucked all the way down to New Mexico here are also sitting at above average. Well, get on the other side of the mountains and you can see that we're st sitting in deficit for this time of year. Now, just to bring you up to speed on, on a discussion we had in last week's long range outlook, this is where we finished the month of October that over there on the left. And what we're going to be thinking about here is how much of the northern hemisphere snow cover extent was in the positive range. In other words, the departure was greater than normal. And certainly the Canadian prairies stretching all the way through Ontario and Quebec uh, really kept much of the northern hemisphere above average. So when this particular graph gets updated, we're going to be seeing this number over here for 2020 uh, continuing this long term uh, kind of positive early season snowfall for the northern hemisphere. Again, we talked about that last week. But let's come back to our temperature discussion. This map shows the extent of temperatures that have been below freezing through October 31st. So wherever you see the gray, that's where we've had those frosty temperatures already. The white has not yet experienced it. And I'm gonna focus in on this area right in through here because our all hazards weather map this morning shows a broad area right in through here of frost advisories and that deeper shade of color there, that would actually be a freeze warning. So this is gonna be over in parts of the Western Piedmont, getting down into the Northern parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, through the Tennessee Valley and the Ohio River Valley back over toward the Ozark. This is going to be our high wind advisories today and through here. And still, the winter storm issues up here with the lake effect snow, something we're going to be discussing, or at least we saw earlier in the, in the radar animation. So let's take a look at those temperatures. These were the forecast minimum temperatures for today. And just look here at this white line, which represents where we expect to see our temperatures below freezing. So very chilly morning here in parts of the Midwest. But you can see how warm things are in the West. And I'm going to watch these temperatures evolve from today uh, through the rest of this week. So this is this morning's forecast minimum temperatures. Let's pause it tomorrow morning. Patchy frost in parts of North Carolina, South Carolina, getting up into parts of Virginia. So that's the cool air moving with the trough to the east. And as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday, look at the warm up happening across the country. Here's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And as we get into next weekend, you can start to see the pattern changing, but much of this week is going to see a broad warm up from west to east until we see the next trough digging in there into the western part of the United States. Now, I want to show you a new suite of maps I'm working on here. Uh, when we think about fall, some of us uh, like to think about fall field work, especially fall applications of nitrogen, for example. And if you look, the map I'm showing you here has got a band of color in it. Now, on the southern extent of this, this is 50 degrees. So anywhere that you see white south of that line, this is where the temperatures of the four inch soil are above 50 degrees. Where you go north of this, we're going to be seeing our soil temperatures below freezing. So I'm trying to show you a band of colors in here that sit between you know 32 and 50. That's the colors we're going to watch. Now I'm just going to play this and we're just going to watch this evolve here. Here comes the warm up the end of this week. Here comes the next cool down early next week. But what I want you to see here is there's going to be a band right in through this area where as we work our way to the middle of this month, we're going to be seeing pretty commonly temperatures below 50 but above freezing with our four inch soil temperatures, which means I think we could get quite a bit of fall field work done here. Uh, but we do need to be watching what the precipitation is going to look like. And I'm going to get to that in just a few moments. Maybe to see all of that, let's Let's go straight to the upper levels of the atmosphere. Now, you can see what I see. Deep trough. This is exiting the, the northeast today. Look at the ridge behind it. And as I play this forward, that ridge that much of this week is going to be the most dominant factor. Watch it again with me here. So I took you all the way out here to Thursday evening and the flow goes flat. The flow advances north and therefore the broad scale warmth spreads in this area. But as we get out here toward our weekend, so this would be Friday morning, Friday afternoon and evening, getting into the overnight hours and then eventually through Saturday, you see the deep trough that is digging here into the western part of the United States. And I've been watching it all weekend for its position. Its position will be critical for west coast precipitation. And as this sweeps through, this is now getting us to the start of next week. This deep trough, well, you can follow the flow around it, then running over a large ridge that's between the Great Lakes and the Hudson Bay. And that's going to set things up to be quite volatile right here in the midsection of the United States. Now, again, this is for early next week. We can also see by that time period where the upper level kind of uh, feature here is on top of Hurricane Ada. And the big question is, does this come out? Does Ada come out here and then move eventually into the Gulf of Mexico? 
So starting us off, here is the high resolution NAM model playing us out through our next three days. We can see that for much of the country, things are uneventful. But if we just watch this again, after our lake effect snow, we got a little quick hitting snow showers through parts of Ontario here, moving over to this part of Quebec. And then with the flow coming almost out of the West, we do see here in the Pacific Northwest chances for, well, you, as you can see here, some showers coming in as we get into Tuesday and eventually into Wednesday. So that's it. That's all we've got in the near term across the country. And in fact, if you go out in the European model over the next five days and the GFS over the next five days, there's a broad sector of the country in through here that is really not going to see much in the way of precipitation at all. But notice the Pacific Northwest, specifically zone in there on California for those that are watching in California. And with that trough that I showed you digging in, we're going to really increase our precipitation chances uh, toward the end of this week. And we got to be looking at that to see uh, what, what we're expecting there. Now, before I show you that, I would like to talk about winds because for many of us in the midsection of the country over the weekend and then in the Northeast today, we saw some extremely windy conditions. Well, what I want to play for you here is the accumulated maximum wind gusts through our next week. So today, very windy day, as you can see in this part of Ontario, very windy day in this part uh, of the East Coast, okay? And as we play this forward, we notice that as we work our way through Friday evening, much of the midsection of the country gets one of those weeks where things are just very uneventful. But look at the strong winds coming in at the end of the week as well for this part of the western United States. And we're going to see how that really translates into the central plains of the U.S. getting into next week. That's when things are really going to take off here. So coming back to the hurricane. What we notice is that the path of Hurricane Ada is expected to take this as a strong hurricane here into parts of Central America. Now, as it emerges here near Guatemala and Belize, the question is, does it come out here into this part of the Caribbean? Some of the European model ensemble members take it there. And then where it goes north of here is largely still unknown. I don't even want to speculate on what I think it could possibly do because it'll be critical to see the timing of when Ada emerges and what's going on with the flow pattern across North America. But this is common for this time of year for systems to move north out of the Caribbean. So let's watch it carefully and it'll be a big unknown that we're going to have to just discover together throughout this week. So taking you again to where we are by the time we get to Sunday, it's going to be this deep trough that's going to be the main story for the midsection of the United States. Will that trough be bringing precipitation into California? Well, this is where we desperately need it. We are currently sitting at zero inches of accumulation across these northern uh, 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 precipitation stations in the northern Sierra. This line right here tells you how things should be evolving uh, if, if everything was average. So we're well behind normal. It's the same thing in parts of the central San Joaquin precipitation stations there, currently sitting at zero. And also you come a little bit farther to the south on the Tulare, they're also down here sitting at zero. So any changes we can get in the pattern to bring more westerly flow into California will be very beneficial to this. And what we see is the European model as it dips that trough in, it is actually increasing the probability of rainfall here. But for many of you that watch my video in the midsection of the country, what you're seeing is the GFS doing this and the European doing that. And again, what are we looking at here? This would be day seven through day 10, that four day time period, day seven through day 10. So this is early next week, what we're looking at in terms of precipitation. Notice the GFS, what it's doing with ADA, the European, what it's doing with ADA. Again, a lot of uncertainty here, but the midsection of the United States looks to get kind of lit up by this flow pattern here. So let me show you what's going on. As I play this forward, I can just let this go until we get all the way toward almost the end of the week. That's right. I just played this all the way through the weekend. And for many of us in the midsection of the country, all we're going to be getting by the time we get into the weekend, is just going to be some strong southerly winds. But here's the system dipping down at the end of the week into the West. And that is when we start to see our precipitation chances increasing here in California, in the mountains. And then what we notice is by the time we get into Sunday morning, afternoon, and evening, there's this deep low that starts to take shape that pulls into parts of southern Alberta into southern Saskatchewan and eventually here into Manitoba, leaving a broad front stretch into this area. It's so deep. There's a lot of snow in the mountains on the backside. And look at what we could be getting early next week into California. We got to watch this carefully. And just because I know you're looking down here, this is what the European operational model has for ADA. When I start to see this setting up, I want to know how robust of a feature is this in the models, because that's a big low right there in southern Manitoba. So if we go look at the ensemble members, so this is all 51 of 
them, you can see three separate regions of low pressure development. Those are the two that are emerging out ahead of that deep trough that comes in like this. And look at how well the ensembles are picking up on the position of Ada. So this would be a quiet week this week going off, you know, into a very active week next week for much of the United States. So week two, European model, picking up on a major precipitation anomaly in that area. You can also see that with that trough digging in, it is bringing California back at least closer to normal with wetter than average conditions in parts of Oregon and Washington, especially in Oregon. That's important given the drought situation there. The GFS is quicker with the wave, which is why you see the wetter conditions here, but don't see it in the western part of the United States. And that's been a characteristic of the GFS for a while. It's always wanted to move things way quicker and it ends up slowing down to what the European solution has been saying. Temperatures next. Let's now look at high temperatures. We've already looked at lows. Now, I think you can imagine what this is going to do. Monday's high temperatures really warming up in the plains here. Watch as I play this forward and you see that warmth spread east. That's almost summer-like weather in here, and that's going to melt all that snow, whatever's left of it here in this part of the country. So Tuesday's highs into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's where the trough begins to dig in. So we've got several days here of very warm conditions and dry conditions. It's going to be beautiful. Finish harvest, start planting that fall field work. Uh, it, it's going to be a great week ahead of us here as we will look out over the next uh, five to seven days here. Going out today, five through 10, you can see the pattern. Look at how cold the West is. In fact, we're getting, getting our temperatures down here about 25 degrees below average in this particular section of Montana again uh, as this pattern really amplifies. And going all the way out here today, 10 through 15, we can see the model still hanging onto that warmth uh, to the east. But look, do you see how much quicker the cool is moving to the east in the GFS while the European leaves it back here? That is the much faster pattern of the GFS I just explained, okay? From there, I want to talk to you about what things look like all the way out to day 15, because we continue to see the models reinforcing troughing in this area. Now, that is further to the west than where it was during the month of October. Both models have backed this trough up. It was centered more right here throughout the month of October. And one of the reasons for this is that the MJO is finally moved. It was sitting here at the beginning of October, it moved through phase five and into six and seven to start the month of November. And it's now forecast to pop out of seven, go quickly into eight and then one and two. Now, just understand this phase one and two tend to keep cooler air across the western part of North America. Now, I want to tell you something. This isn't the only feature that controls our temperature patterns, but it is very much constructive with what I saw in the position of the jet stream. That's what I wanted to point out for you here. There's another component to the MGO moving around as well. We need to watch for it to come back into phase three, four, and five as we work our way through the middle and end of the month of November. And why that's going to be important? With our developing La Nina and yes, it is still developing those ocean temperatures now down there below that one and a half degrees Celsius mark. We will start to see the resurgence of those trade winds again. Now, why I'm bringing all of this up is because it's going to be critical for South America. We are going to be seeing over the next five days really good upper level support for rising motion here with sinking motion just to its south. And we're going to watch as the MJO adjusts to actually kind of suppress the monsoon into week two. And that's what I want to show you. You see right now over the next week, very dry conditions will put a D in it there as our best upper level support is in through this area. But remember, leading up to this week, we had great moisture return to much of Brazil as the MJO popped out of that phase four, five and moved through six, seven and now into eight. But notice as you get into week two, we do see wetter than average conditions here where it is drier this week. It's going to go and stay drier in parts of Argentina, but then dry out across Brazil's northern area as currently forecast by the European ensemble. We need to just keep a very close eye on this. Watch the accumulated precipitation this year throughout Brazil because just a quick recap of what we talked about on Thursday, we do know that planning progress is about, you know, two to two and a half weeks behind normal. So we got a lot to watch here. I'll watch it for you. Okay. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.